which usually creates a fibrotic scar. And in fact, that's exactly what happens if healing is allowed to pr proceed. And it's an absolutely essential way in which we take care of less gruesome injuries than the Promethean vultures um, and devouring of the liver. Now, the difference between wound healing and regeneration is beautifully illustrated by these two tissues because a muscle, although you'll see, has some regenerative capacity, can't really regrow. And anyone who's been in a serious car accident knows that the muscle is the hardest thing to actually get back, whereas the liver can fully regenerate. It attains its form and function just as if it was new. So what is going on here? Are stem cells involved? What's the difference between wound healing and regeneration? I'd like to take a minute to just recapitulate some of the points that Doug made in his lecture about stem cells. On the left here, you see cells that are dividing. The blue cell knows to make two daughter cells that are blue. The green makes two daughter cells that are green. This is the way the majority of the cells in your body actually divide to replenish your body. Now, a stem cell is slightly different. A stem cell can do exactly the same thing. It can divide to make two stem cells. But the thing that makes it truly a stem cell is what you'll see on the right. Here, a cell is giving rise to two daughters, one of which will maintain a stem cell um, nature, and the other of which will be, go on to make either a blue, a green, or a yellow cell. So this is the difference between the division of a regular cell that can only make itself and a stem cell that can make itself but can make other things as well. And in the embryo, of course, the stem cells hold sway at the very early stages that you saw Doug talking about with those eight cells sitting as an early embryo. But soon, all sorts of specification has to occur, as we saw. We have to be able to make livers and, and pancreases and skin. And all of those other colors, then, are represented here in the embryo. And the stem cells get diluted out and become less and less, until in the adult, there are actually very, very few stem cells in our body. You heard about the most prevalent ones, but even in the blood, only about one in 10,000 cells in your bone marrow is actually a stem cell. So stem cells in the adult are there, but they're much, much less prevalent. Now that's true for us, but it's not necessarily the case for organisms that rely on being able to regenerate, truly regenerate, in order to survive. And we're going to have a little look at some of these because I'm a biologist and I love animals. And we're going to see how simple animals, such as the planaria that you see on the left, on the top, the hydra, which is the green thing that looks like a sprig, and the famous starfish, are capable of regenerating. They regenerate in the most miraculous fashion. You can cut these things in half, and literally both halves will make a new organism. And I'll show you a bit about that. The complex animals you see below also are very good at regenerating, but they do it with a little less uh, drama in that they can regenerate a limb or a tail, but they can't regenerate an entire animal from just um, a single chunk. So let's look at planaria. Some of you in the audience have actually done experiments with this as pre preparation for this talk. And so this will be old hat to you. But a planaria that's cut in half can actually regenerate the part that's missing. That means that the whole head of the planaria can regenerate and the whole tail can regenerate. And this is because planaria are actually full of stem cells. They have little cells called neoblasts in planaria speak, which are capable of regenerating large portions or whole planaria. And so that's the reason why the limit of regeneration in a planaria is so uh, extraordinarily dramatic. Cutting a planaria into many little pieces gives you a planaria for each piece. And that's because each piece contains some of those stem cells. So some of the students did an experiment with planaria, helped by uh, Alejandro Alvarez, who's an expert on this. And the question they had was, in a planaria, shown here with the head on the left, stained up blue, and um, the tail on the right, if one cuts the planaria in two at either position one, two, or three, leaving an almost whole planaria minus a head, a half a planaria, or just a tail, what happens at the, uh, at, at the uh, regeneration point? Basically, what happens is you get a new head in each case. And you can see this by looking for the eye spots. Those cute little eye spots are actually photosensitive. Now, the question was, is a planaria's capability for making a head different if it's here 
or if you have to start here. And so the ability to do this was tested by looking at the time it took to put that head back into place. And as you can see, the best, the winner of this game was the largest piece, which had a very short time bef before the head was formed, whereas the loser was the tail. It took a bit longer, but even so, we got a tail growing a head. And here are just some beautiful shots of the students' work in which you see the stem cells, those neoblasts, those sparkly cells, shown up on the right as a stain for the stem cells and on the left in the context of the whole animal. Now, it just so happens the one on the left had its tail cut off and the one on the right had its head cut off. And that's why those cells seem to be so active at this point. OK, so now um, that's one kind of very dramatic uh, regeneration, but we, it's hard to relate to a planaria. I mean, it's got cute little eyes, but for the rest of it, it doesn't have much else that looks like us. However, I'm going to show you an organism, if I can put this glove on straight, that looks a lot more like us than that planaria, although you may not think so. For a biologist, this guy is one short step away from mankind. And I'm going to bring him out here and see if I can get him on the close TV. There he is. This is a salamander or a newt. I'm going to put him here out so that you can see him, I hope, on the screen. He's really quiet at the moment, but these guys can scamper like crazy. And they're very, very small and very easy to lose, but <laughs> <laughs> they have, as I hope you can see, a head. He sees moving it now. They have two forelimbs, two hind limbs. They even have fingers. I think these guys have five or four, and a tail. And inside, they have a beating heart, lungs, a liver, a pancreas, intestines, a skin, and a very small brain. And they're very, very capable of uh, running and outrunning their prey. But if by any chance part of their tail or their limb gets cut off, they can regenerate the entire thing. So you see, I'm just going to see if I can make him move a little bit so that you can see those limbs. You see how detailed they are? Now, Doug was entranced at the rehearsal and asked me to get this little guy. Now, this didn't happen in the rehearsal. To get this little guy and show you what his belly looks like, because his belly is beautiful and red. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> now I'm going to do another trick, which is He's so cute, I'm going to kiss him and turn him into a prince. <laughs> that was for you, Doug. OK, guy, that's enough for you. Back in the story. Now, he's lucky. He didn't get his leg cut off. He just got a kiss. But what I'm going to show you is what happens if you do cut off the leg of a newt. And for that, we have a beautiful video. So let's start the video. Now, we're going to have a look at the way in which a, um, a, an amputated limb grows over the course of about 90 days in a salamander. That's a time-lapse movie, watching that thing grow. And now we're going to see what's really going on. Here is the salamander, and it's got a completely new limb. It looks perfect. It has inside bone. It has nerves and muscle, and it can even wiggle. In fact, it's perfect. Now we're going to cut it off. <laughs> but here's the good news. It grows back. So don't be too scared. First, wound healing. Did you see that wound heal? Now we're watching what the newt can do that we cannot do. Cells are streaming out of the surrounding tissues into the area of the wound and forming what we call a blastema, which is a group of undifferentiated cells that are, in fact, really just like stem cells. And they're multicolored because they come from skin, from muscle, and even from cartilage. And these have a miraculous memory of what they used to be and are able to form a perfectly functional limb. And that happens all within anywhere from 30 to 90 days, depending on the size. Those little guys would do it faster. So we'd like to know